and the Ride of My Life podcast and blog. And this season is going to include my story and how I ended up taking this journey and different suggestions um, by way of my continuing my, journey, my healing journey, mind, body, and soul, and being able to find peace and self-love and to expand my life more and express myself more and then share that with you so you have some choices and ways to see what resonates with you. So welcome and I'm glad you're here. Hey everyone, I'm Caroline Rena from the Ride of My Life podcast and I am so excited today about my guest who I have. And I'm not going to do an introductory bio because I'm going to let him talk because we've known each other for a while. And I think he's got plenty of good things to say. And he can he can give you a tiny little background of uh, for his bio. And then I'd like for you, Michael, this is Michael Berger, by the way, he um, can let you know exactly what he does and all that fun stuff. And um, I'll let him talk to you about some different things. But let's start off, Michael, with... Um, just a short introduction of who you are. Well, uh, Caroline, thanks. It's so happy to, to see you and to be part of this great podcast. I love the work that you're doing. Thank you. Uh, and the healing journey that you've been on and how it inspires so many. Uh, for me, yeah, I'm so Michael Berg. I'm a licensed therapist uh, here in South Florida, Boca Raton specifically. And I work with adults and couples, and I, I really have a passion for inner child work and helping uh, adults uh, kind of learn more about how their childhood has impacted them. And so a lot of clients of mine struggle with codependency, self-esteem, you know, believing in themselves, um, life transitions. And I'd like to use a creative approach using humor and experiential exercises to really get the clients to uh, not only get them insight, but get them to where they want to be in their life. Yes, thank you so much. And I really, I have to say something experiential. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this later as far as experiential goes pretty much in a big way. But experiential for me has been so important because just doing talk therapy doesn't, for me, it doesn't work. I'm, for some people, I'm sure it works or works to a point. But for me, it, I have to have an experience of, and I think that's so important. I'm glad you said that. Um and yeah, so why don't you give us a little brief history, maybe of your childhood experiences, kind of what got you into going on your own journey of healing, um, what got you to want to um, help others, you know, the whole the whole thing. I'd really love to hear that. Sure, we'll jump right in. Um, so I grew up in uh, one of uh, three siblings. I was the middle child mm. and I uh, had a... Uh, uh, two professional parents. My dad uh, was a professor. My mom was also a therapist. And, uh, uh, you know, I was, I was a sensitive kid and I had parents who were, I think, workaholics, um, that, you know, enablers mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, great parents for, and this is, you know, when we talk about parents, it's never a blame conversation, by the way. Um, but the way we're parented certainly has an impact, right? On us. So, you know, so growing up, I, I, I had this experience of um, uh, doubting my, myself, um, low self-esteem, uh, a lot of people-pleasing stuff. Like I would need to ask people 
for their opinion on like everything. So I, 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 I really had a hard time trusting in my own intuition, mm -hmm. even when it was screaming at me like, yeah, this path is the right way to go. I needed to have check with my mom or my parents. And the message that I got directly and indirectly is as long as I do what my parents tell me, life will be good. Well, mm -hmm. that's, that's okay to a point. Right. But it doesn't leave room for what's called individuation, right? Breaking off and being my own person. And I remember there was a, 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 a point where, you know, as a growing up, I'm here, this struggle has been, had been going on for me, uh, the things that I mentioned that uh, I remember being in a relationship and, and she was asking me, uh, uh, offering to pay for something for me. And I, and I, I had this profound impact on me. I said, when am I going to feel like I'm my own person? When am I going to feel like confident that I can support myself or make my own decision? And I, and, and I, I really, it was upsetting, you know, and a lot of these memories came back again about this, almost like this dependency on other people and how painful that experience was and how critical of myself I was and judgmental of myself. I was and you know, I couldn't, I couldn't stomach mistakes or I had to be the funny one in every group mm -hmm. I was in, uh, you know, and if I wasn't making people laugh or being interesting that I went into a shame spiral. Mm -hmm. And so this, and, and a lot of times I could put on a smiley face. I think a lot of adults can relate to that. Like put on a, uh, a face, like, like everything's fine, but the yep. truth was that, that, that things weren't. And so my, and so I, I saw therapists here and there, but my my healing journey really started to take off, if you will, when I started working on my own codependency. You know, I went to a 12-step program and I started reading about it and started learning about the lack of self-love that I experienced. Like I was really craving it. I didn't yeah. have it, right? Yeah. And so that, that's been my journey like of like discovering a way to love myself, set boundaries, and um it's it's been quite a ride <laughs> yeah i mean it sounds like it because and, and it's always a ride it's like this but as long as you're going up on the roller coaster mm. roller coaster ride it's great and yep. yeah thank you so much i appreciate um you sharing that and i wrote a couple of notes down while you were talking one of the things was you said something about um did you i think you said something about feeling self-love or finding self-love Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say something because it's almost like a lot of us don't even know what it is. Like, I remember when I started learning about self-love, I'm like, well, what does that mean? How does that play into my life? I don't, how can I love myself if I don't even understand? Because, you know, if you've never been in a situation where you can witness, there's a word for it. I always forget um, when you watch your parents doing, you know, their thing and it's, it's, um, it's uh, not negative. It's like a positive situation that you're watching it and you learn by watching and that's how children do. And so if you don't see your parents showing you showing self-love for themselves, how do you learn that? How do you even know what it looks like? You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you do you want to say something about that or, or I just want to. Well, yeah, you know, there's this, this concept of mirroring. Yeah. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and what's role model to us as kids, you know, parents are our template. Yeah. They teach us by what they do and what they don't do, what they say and what they don't say, right? And then we 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 learn what it is to be a man from our dads and what it is to be a mom from our mothers. And we learn about relationships and work and love and feelings. And so many of those messages we get end up not working for us, right? So we, we start making decisions based on these beliefs that we developed as a result of our interactions in our home. Yep. And then start uh, having experiences in life that, are frustrated. We start making. Why, we start wondering why do I keep choosing the same partner? Why do I keep choosing the same job? Why again. do I keep feeling this way? I don't again. like it. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't seem to get out of it. Right. I know. Again and again. Yeah. Again, no. I right? <laughs> totally get that. I totally right. get. That. Yeah. And so, but but it's empowering when we learn. Well, well, there's a reason why, and it comes from a place. Yeah. Like why we make these choices, and you know what, we can start to make different choices in our life and have a different experience when we, when we are able to get the awareness, you know, so often, so many of us have been walking around just, just unaware. And and we're unaware that we're unaware because everything's in right. the subconscious. I mean, that's the depth of this stuff. That's why it's so 
um, in most cases is really challenging just to touch on it. And if you don't have any uh, curiosity and you don't really um, want to know why your behaviors are that way or why, you know, things are happening in your life or whatever, you just keep plowing with your head down. Uh, you're not going to want to know what that is. You're not going to want to break into that subconscious um, uh, belief system that happens. So, yeah, and it's not the easiest thing in the world, especially for people who are kind of on the fence, I would say, you know. Um, yeah. And then, OK, so there was a couple other things that you had said. I'm just going to touch on the one because it fits with mine sure. with my. <laughs> so you had said something about being a sensitive kid and being yeah. able to just say that as a man on, you know, out there is very powerful to me because mm -hmm. sensitivity is, is looked at as a, um, as a, a negative thing in our society. And, uh, you know, especially with men who are taught, you know, don't cry, don't, you know, the shame, 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 and then anger and then shame and then anger. And then, shame. you know, I mean, it's like, how do you be who you are if you have all that stuff just stacked up on top of, you know, all of that. And it's hard to break into that. And being sensitive, I have learned, because <laughs> as when I learned I was a highly sensitive person, uh, I took this test online. I think it was at hsperson.com. And out of 27 traits of sensitivity, I'm 26. Wow. I was like, oh my God, no wonder I do what I do. <laughs> So wow. it was very helpful for me, you know, to understand that. And it became my superpower. It became the thing because I'm so sensitive. I can feel other people or animals or whatever. And I can do the work that I do because I can feel to that depth and understand how people are feeling. And a lot of people don't even understand why I know that, Um which is fine, but then they also throw out this whole, why are you acting like such a drama queen? And why are you so sensitive? And why are you crying so much or whatever? It's not, this is a nervous system thing. This isn't something that you can, can really control with your mind and you probably don't need to anyway. But I just wanted to throw that out there because I really am grateful that you brought that up because a lot of men won't admit that they're sensitive <laughs> um, more and more lately, but in the, for the most part, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad so, you said that. A couple of things come to mind. But, and one is you asked about what self-love is. How do I know if I'm loving self? And and you actually, without knowing it, you actually demonstrated what self-love looks like when you described your sensitivity as a superpower. Right. So your relationship with this characteristic of yours of sensitivity is is a healthy and positive one i mean it's so positive that you you identify the superpower right and it's, it makes you feel powerful sets you apart um and and that intrinsically feels good for you and so that is an example of hmm. someone who is loving of self versus like a lot of clients that i would work with especially men uh and you mentioned men you mentioned men and sensitivity they're when they have a feeling they don't call that a superpower they call it weakness mm -hmm. they call it judgment it's bad it's something to push away i've got no time for it right and so oftentimes they say that because that was what was role modeled to them the messages that they got directly and indirectly from the men in their life <laughs> you know fathers mostly right mm -hmm. um so in the work i do with men i run a men's group for 10 years uh, it's getting men to communicate clearly, directly, but also getting them to see the power and influence of vulnerability on mm. how they feel about themselves and in their relationships. Yeah, and that's so needed, especially in the society. I mean, in our society, everything is like this tough white male thing. I got to be powerful. I got to do this. And power is not, you don't have to have, power doesn't have to be like a physical power. It's it's a it's a um energetic power you know and and just being that power is still being powerful and you don't have to fight somebody or yell at somebody or hit somebody or whatever to feel powerful when you start doing the work and that's where it gets a little bit challenging for men nowadays i think is is they're starting to see that and they know that they need help but then getting in there and and starting to do the work on themselves can't be that can't be easy you know, especially with like what you said, the role modeling um, by their fathers and people around them or whatever, telling them, you know, like, if you want to feel a feeling, that's wrong. 
you know, and that's not true because our feelings are like a GPS system, you know, so they, they guide us through life. They're, they're our intuition. They're connected to our intuition, you know, and it's so sad. It's always bothered me that, that men are told those things. And I've had relationships with men that can't, couldn't connect to their emotions. And that hurt me, because, especially because I could feel their emotions <laughs> underneath the surface when they're like, oh, well, I'm great. Ah. Yeah, OK. <laughs> and they never got it until they got it. But that's why I'm not with them anymore, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so and, and this is all wonderful information. And I really want to touch. I don't Is there anything else you want to bring up real quick before we get into the, like the, the meat of this part? Um, well, just you know, you know, the power and vulnerability, and I'll ask men, how powerful do you feel uh, as a result of like holding on to your feelings? Because you know, there's a lot of problems that come up when they don't express their feelings. They they lose great people like you, like you said, yeah. you're not with the men, and the, or they have problems in relationships, or they have health problems, or they have mm -hmm. problems with their anger. How powerful does that feel, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just a paradigm shift that can occur when they say, "Oh wait, wait a minute." There's strength and vulnerability. It's not a weakness thing, you know? So look up Renee Brown. Man. She's the one who started that. Renee them. Brown, absolutely. <laughs> She's got great, great TED Talks on that for yeah, sure. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Um, that's right, you know, and I just feel like um, what we talk about next will kind of lead into hopefully people seeing that it's not like, okay, first of all, I want to share a mantra that I have used since I was. Um, in what started my journey, this, this part of my journey, and we're not, I'm not going to say anything yet, <laughs> but what okay. started this part of my journey was um, being a part of a personal development course that we're going to talk about in a moment. But the mm -hmm. mantra that I got from this course, I did, um, I supervised a, a, one of the courses one time, and we had to come up with, a, with this, with a mantra for the course or what, what the course was about that time. And we put it on a t-shirt and we put together the whole thing. And it's been my mantra ever since. And this was back in like 2016. And um, the mantra for me now is be willing, be courageous, be free. Mm. I feel like it's that willingness that starts the ball rolling on the action step. But before that, even there's a decision or a choice that needs to be made. If you're sick and have you've probably heard this before, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're going to make a choice. A two by fours hit you over the side of the head. You can't take things anymore. You got to do something. I got to find something. That's exactly yeah. what, you know, what was going on for me when I took this course. And um, it's been a godsend for me. And that's what I'd like to bring up now, because it was it was something where when I took it back in 2014, um, I did it with my son and we had gone through some horrific uh, experiences uh, probably for at that time, maybe 18, 19 years worth. And I tend to call it like it, it's parental alienation or family bond obstruction or parental obstruction. There's different names for it. Um, and I choose those, those three because they kind of give an idea, but it's not... We're not, um, well, you can look it up. We're not talking about that today. Um, <laughs> so that's what brought us into this course. And it gave the very first thing that I watched what was going on um, was we were put in front of each other and I had never really understood what listening was about, how to fully be present and listen. And we were in the room sitting across from each other. We had a therapist instructor next to us processing this whole thing. And, um, she told him to speak out what something that he has wanted to say, you know, up until that point, he's been, he's been wanting to say something and not to make it too long, obviously, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, and then my job in this whole thing was to listen and be present. And then I had to repeat verbatim back everything that he said. And yeah. It was the most amazing thing. And I somehow I did it. And from that point on, I paid attention. That's when I started paying attention to how I listened to people. And it was a huge learning experience. And we both got something out of it. And apparently, obviously, the entire room got something out of it. There were almost 200 people in that room. And if you don't know what a puppy pile is, I'm just going to tell you right now. <laughs> Everybody was like all on top. I couldn't even see. 
Um, and I got people coming up to me afterwards and they were saying, oh my God, I felt like I healed something with my mother by, by the two of you doing that. And that's what, that, it brought me to tears. And that's what started my journey through the course and mm. ever since. And that's why I want to talk with you because you also <laughs> have a link to this course. And I'd like to get like a, a, a moment for you. And then we can talk about what the course, as much as we can about like the history of the course, um, its goal, what the course, um, the goals that the course has, what it does, the benefits. I mean, you're already seeing some of them by me talking. Uh, mm -hmm. But I want you to share that moment in that course that ke that, that just brought you into um, the, the powerful uh, healing journey that you went on. Yeah, uh, thanks for asking. And, and uh, what a great uh, experience that you had. You know, thanks yeah. for sharing that. It's, it's, you know, it's the power of the group and the power of like relating and how when you show your humanness and your vulnerability and others like witness it, they can see what's possible for them and it it they can say like wow if if in this case she and her son can do it maybe i can do it with my son or my daughter or in my relationship and so many more things become possible and mm -hmm. you know I've, I've been involved in, in in this course work since geez, 2010 so it's been 12 years of that's a lot of courses in, in that time so mm -hmm. a lot of moments uh you know and you know you know, what, so they're not any one in one moment, but I, I'd say there, there's a moment where I was doing it, doing an exo exercise that helped me really um, forgive my uh, my mom. You know, I was holding on to some significant resentment, right? And the the exercise I was able to do, and the way they were the 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 way it was worded, and the person who was sitting in front of me, um, kind of resembled my mom and and again so the words I was saying I just really started to to open up and I was able to sh it was powerful because I was able to shift from the anger resentment mm -hmm. just to the that wounded little kid you know and all I really wanted was to to be loved by her and and in and in, in, in the exercise I saw the just the damage that I was doing to myself by holding on to the blame mm -hmm. and the resentment so the exercise helped me see that and feel it. Mm -hmm. And then once I removed that, all, all that was left was like, just like a, a, a love, mm -hmm. you know, for her. And I could kind of have empathy for her. Right. And, but it also was very freeing. I said, wow, I could, I could let this go. I I've been holding, I've been choosing to hold on to it. Although it didn't, it never felt like a, I'm cho choosing it. Like I'm choosing chocolate or vanilla ice cream. Right. It didn't feel like a choice. But, but I learned that I was, and then I could also just, just as easily make a different choice, which was so freeing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go. And one of the, the expressions that was shared in the course room that I loved and, and still and use with my clients from time to time about resentments particularly is like resentments are like, you take the rat poison, hoping the rat dies. Yeah. <laughs> right? the rat's yeah. camping around, you're taking the poison. Why is the rat still there? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and that kind of leads into what I was going to, because you brought something up, a thought, is that, you know, when we're children, we really don't know what's happening to us. Our, our frontal lobe doesn't, I talk about this all the time, our frontal lobe doesn't even really start to develop until we're 26. So we don't, we don't even hook into that emotional system until that age. And it was interesting because that's when I started started my original part of my or healing journey was when I was 27. Um, but what I'm what I found out or figured out from all of this is that that little child doesn't know any better. There's forgiveness involved in in helping with that because they didn't. I forgive myself because I didn't know any better as a child. But when you get to be an adult and you start to see yourself behaving in certain ways that aren't good for you or anybody else, then you get to take 100% responsibility for your behaviors and start to see and observe what's happening so you can change your life and heal that child that literally, technically, subconsciously, you know, however you want to say it, gets stuck inside of you at that age that it's been wounded or traumatized. Mm -hmm. 
And so when you reckon, when you start to recognize that, you can take the responsibility, you can learn how to forgive yourself and not beat yourself up or beat the other person up for not knowing any better either, to be, to be honest, you know, and it's, that's what's so important. Um, so I'd like to start talking uh, about this course. Uh, it is called the Real R E A L course, and Michael, you're going to have to give. It's actually an acronym at this point, I think, and it's got meanings for it. And I hope you remember because I do not. Um, and I'd like for you to kind of give a history of it real quick and just kind of share its its growth. It's it's gone through <laughs> growth too, you know. So it's had plenty of that and 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 coming into its own. So this is new generation, you know. So if you could just share a little bit about the history, that would be great. Yeah, you know, this is going to be some homework for the listeners because I, you know, in this moment, I, I, I you know, you in terms of being vulnerable blanking on on what the acronym stands for but the good news is if they go to real the real courses.com the real courses.com they could you know learn more something about what the course is about and what the real stands for i'll post so, it i'll post it i'll look it up and post it too yeah it. <laughs> um so uh but there's vulnerability right um, there you go <laughs> you know so the you know I think the what, what's important to know is, um, you know, it, it, it's it, the, it, when I began this coursework, it was a course called TLC, which was called the Living Course, right? And its its basic tenet was much of what we're talking about here that uh, we have this inner child, right? Which is we have these early childhood experiences, and within these experiences, we develop beliefs about ourselves and um, many of which are like limiting beliefs, like I'm not good enough or I'm unlovable, right? The little child makes a decision based on what was going on for them. So the seed of shame was planted. And if you break down the feeling of shame into the belief, the most common one is I'm not good enough. Others are I'm unlovable. I'm incompetent, that kind of thing. So no one is born believing that about themselves, right? So those beliefs uh, get developed as children. And then we grow up into adults and we make decisions about ourselves and our lives based on these beliefs, which lay, as you mentioned, in the subconscious. And so we're, we're making these choices we're having these familiar reactions to people, places, and things that are uncomfortable or make us sad or angry or afraid, and we don't quite know why. Right? And that's those, if I may interrupt real quick, that sure, was what you sure. said earlier about how that becomes repetitive in life until you actually yeah. see the pattern and break that because it, it can exactly. happen over again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the, the genius of the course was that it... Um, it not only provided the education in the beginning in terms of the concepts of the course to, to get buy-in from the students that uh, the concept that I was sharing and also how we kind of do drama in our relationships, right? And so the course is really about um, identifying these beliefs, so connecting with this inner child or these emotional memories, and then also taking responsibility for your life, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it it, I think it sets itself apart from other experiences because of the, the various experiential exercises that are so special and so powerful. It allows each participant to um, get into the, one of their core feelings, mm -hmm. which is you know, mad, sad, afraid, shame, and joy, frankly, right? There's opportunities for joy in the course. So they're able to feel those things as we all did as kids at 100% right? Feel it, work through it, and be okay, right? Uh, another mantra, you mentioned mantras earlier, is I'm sad and I'm okay, or I'm afraid and I'm okay, right? That's one and of my so, favorites. I love that. I do that still. <laughs> yeah, so they're allowed to go through that, and so you see a transformation between Friday night and Sunday, uh, Yeah. and, uh, you know, at one point, the the course um, kind of kind of fell apart like people were leaving the course for various reasons and you know then covid hit right and so there's a time period of time where there wasn't that the course wasn't offered you know and then it, and that the course as we knew it wasn't going to resume but fortunately we had some leaders in the community really step up 
and identify the need for this uh, work and for this course to live on and to continue. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, the, Mark Levinsky is the president and, and the co-president is Randy Amodio. And, um, you know, they, and, and so they, they got it going again. And, 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 and so I'm appreciative to them for creating it or to, for getting it open again and, and uh, offering it again. And, you know, another piece of the, the course of why it became, it's so powerful is because of the community that's involved with it. So it's not just the course, uh, it's the assistants who come every, you know, six to eight weeks uh, to take part in the weekend. All the assistants that are there um, in the room with the students have taken the course. And so that's one of the, powerful aspects of the course that the the community of people who are really invested in their personal development and how they come back not only to support the students but they are able to kind of get m even more insights and continue their own work mm -hmm. um, in the in the process and so i'm excited that the the course is is running again post covid and that i'm really uh excited about kind of where that it's continued growth and 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 attracting more and more uh, more and more people to uh, to experience it. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, I, I've always been a, had a connection with the course, and even when I left, um, when I did, and then my life took over, and then I found different avenues <laughs> to do my own healing work based off of what I learned from that course. I mean, everything I've done, everything I've shared, all of my podcasts that I've done have all been in some way related to what I learned from this course. <laughs> So that's why, you know, the thrill is here to be doing this. Um, and that's why I wanted to share it. I just thought it would be a great idea uh, for people to understand what it's about and maybe know a little bit more about it and maybe be inclined to just take a look into it and see what's going on. But it's so powerful, so powerful for me. Uh, and so let's see, what else were we going to? Oh, do, do, you kind of went into what the course does, but do you want to do more of a um, like a specific thing, or um, do you have anything like maybe the intention? Maybe the intention of what the course will do for someone if they choose to come. Okay. Oh, you, that, that <laughs> that's you. <laughs> Got it. Um. Well, uh, the intention of the course is, is to get awareness first and foremost of what these these limiting beliefs that the people have been operating under for so long and not even been aware of it, you know, and and in that learning about the concept of the inner child and and how through what we do in, in therapy, you know, what I do with my clients and, and, and the concept is called reparenting. Yep. Right. So the idea is like the, the student, the adult is like the loving adult who can give that little boy, little girl the the messages that they they, they needed and never got. Um, yeah. And that was so and important. Doing that is, oh and doing God. that is, is where the a lot of healing comes. So healing, what does healing look like? Healthy boundaries and relationships, uh, self-love, empowerment. So those are feelings that uh, uh, students who take the course leave with and and, 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 and take with them through, through their journey in life. Right. And, and the other, the piece of that, that's so profound is that um, it's like an awakening. Mm. You go in there and I, I, I just watch every time we, we um, are working with these students, even though as an assistant, I'm sitting behind and I'm just watching. And it's like, like you mentioned earlier, the difference between the confusion and, you know, all these things that are happening on, on that, on the first night and they have no clue what's going on. And the rest of us do, you know, and they're like, they want, some of them want to fight and some of them want to just hide and some of them want to leave and some of them may leave. And, you know, I mean, these things have are, are been brought back again, you know, I mean, but the difference between how they presented themselves when they came in that night, the first night, and how they were presenting on during the graduation. I was like night and day. And I remember, I don't want, I don't know if I want to use this word. Uh, it, it's like, 
uh, 33 or, or um, years of not to, not to hurt anything here, but years of therapy in one weekend, you know, and we both experienced that because it's true. It's like I, I've been seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist since I was like four years old when my parents went through a divorce, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm 58 now. So I know pretty much <laughs> almost everything there is to know about therapy. Right. So um, just the seeing the difference is so, so important. Um, and I think that's a, the intention is for, I, I want to say for what I've felt is that, and there's so much love behind all of it. It, it may not feel that way <laughs> sometimes, but there's so much love behind all of it. And the intention is just to open, open up a door. I think the door opening well, it's not just a door. It's like your world. And if you continue the process and you continue to do a little bit every day from that point on, um, I feel like you will experience maybe not exactly the same way I have or Michael has or, you know, other people have, but you will start to experience things that you've never experienced in your life before. But you, you, it, there's a persistence that has to be there. There's a courageousness, like I said earlier, a willingness and when you have that, then you find that freedom. And that's what I felt for me. That's what I felt as um, what that is. So that's how I see the intention, you know, from my own, from my perspective. So um, yeah, and students really appreciate also that there's therapists in the room, you know, therapists like myself who have done the work, have gone through all those exercises as a student, right? And they continue to go back and that's right. do their own work and you know, there's a lot of wounded healers out there and wounded, and that's fine and okay, right? I'll raise my hand too. Uh, but wounded healers who don't do their own work aren't um, aren't really in service of their clients as much as they could be. And I think as we were talking about before the podcast started, you can always tell a healer who hasn't done their work, right? And so yeah. one way to keep the work going for students who've gone through the course Uh, is join a group led by one of these therapists. Or if they want to, they can uh, start doing therapy with one of the therapists that are in the room, if that's something that that Mm they'd like to do. So there's there's options to keep the the learning fresh in their their mind as they navigate through life. And I just want, only because I am one, but... (laughs) Uh, but I don't present it in the course, but every people who know me here, I do transformational coaching and there are yeah. coaches in the course too, that you can connect with as well. So yeah. I'm not one of them. I kind of stay behind the scenes right now because of what I'm doing here. Um, mm-hmm. However, there are plenty of coaches in there that are, you know, so you get, you pretty much get your <laughs> um, pick of the litter there. Cause there's so many, and they do similar yet different things, you know, to help out wherever you are in um in your life or your situation and that's i just wanted that to be available because some people have i guess that stigma on therapists and they like coaches better or somebody has a stigma on a coach and they want to go to a therapist so you have that option you know so and it's all okay whatever you need that's what you do <laughs> so um yeah, thank you. And I think we've kind of gone over the benefits. I mean, we we just by by the way we're we're showing up here right now, these are the benefits. I mean, for I'd like to share mine real quick and then if you want to add something, but uh I was in a space of isolation for many years. I used to hide when I was a child and my parents were um, going through their divorce and I lived with my grandparents and my father. And whenever something came up or my mother called me and said something to she, she what's called parentified me and expected me to take emotionally take care of her. And things like that would happen to me when I was a child. And I would go right to my closet and I would hide in my closet as a kid. And as I got older, I continued to do that, but that's called isolation at that point because you don't go in the closet. You just stay separated from people. And I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And um, the reason, I mean, walking through the beginnings with this course, following the process, and especially over the last year and a half when I was doing my own journey and digging even deeper into um, my uh nervous system issues that dis- we were dysregulation um, when your nervous system is all ready to poise to jump fight flight whatever all that is if you don't heal that that's going to get worse as you get older and I knew that and I didn't want that to happen because 
there's a dissociation that was going on when something happened with me and I would just totally blank out. I didn't want to be there. That was another way of going into my closet. And so the benefits for me is, I mean, five years ago, I would not be sitting here having a conversation <laughs> with anybody, Michael or anyone about this because there's no way I could have. And now I can do this and I'm not, I'm not scared anymore. I'm not afraid for people to see who I am. I'm not afraid of that power inside of me. Um, I'm not afraid of being who I am anymore. And that to me was the benefit that I got out of the course. Mm. So Michael, if you can share maybe what you feel like your benefit was or is from the course. There's, there's many, right? But I, yeah. I think that the two that come to mind in this moment is uh, uh, just a better relationship with me. You know, I, I started treating myself a lot better. Mm -hmm. I had a lot more compassion mm -hmm. for me. And when, when I, when you have more self-compassion that carries over in so many choices in your life, you'll do so many things differently. Right. So that's, that's on top of mind. That's first and foremost. And then, as we mentioned earlier, it, it kind of gave me a sense of community. Yeah. You know, I first started the course in 2010, right. So that's 12 years. And still in touch with some of the same people that I met back then and mm -hmm. enjoy, you know, meeting the new faces. And, um, it's, it's, I know it's a community I'm going to be, you know, part of for years to come. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for it. Even with all the, <laughs> all the dark nights of the soul, you know, you know, I know, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so I just, I think unless there's anything else you want to share, I want to get, I just want to kind of uh, wrap it up uh, and share what the information, the contact info and stuff, which I will be pu uh, putting in the description on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, but for starters, let's start with Michael's contact information or where you can find him if you want to work with him. Um, go ahead and do that, and then we'll we'll uh, share the course information. Sure. So uh, again, th this has been so much fun. Uh, I really appreciate you and all that you do, and thank you, you for the invite. And uh, so yeah, so uh, people can find me online on the website. My therapy, my truth, is uh, the name of the site, which I, I think is fitting given you know kind of what you talk about and what you know you work on. So yeah, yeah so my therapy, my truth, and and all the information about me is on there and, and contact information. And he's a poet. There, so. He's a poet, just like me. <laughs> yeah, so there's a poem there if you'd like to to uh, read that and you see a video of me on the homepage. Yeah. And uh, feel free to you know my email is also on that site as well, so you reach out anytime. And and I, I you know I, my office is in Boca Raton. I. And also see clients uh, not only face to face but virtually as well. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and now um, if you could repeat how people could get in contact with the real courses, course courses. Um, aside from the website being realcourses.com, r e a l c o u r s e s <laughs> dot com. I had to look at my paper. Is there any other? Uh, are there any other suggestions on um, how to contact? To find out more information that's the you know, that's the best best way because not only will they learn more about it they'll get to learn more about the instructors and mm -hmm. uh the 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 phone number to contact would will be on there also okay so yeah i'll strongly recommend to take a moment and and check out the course on the realcourses.com uh, site read through it may, you may have questions as you're reading through and the, the number will be um, there for you to uh, to call, and I think you you most likely be talking to a uh, gentleman by the Mark, who is the the president of the the organization, and he will be answer all the questions that you can have. Right. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Michael. And I just want to say, you know, I talk about this all the time: finding the truth of who you are. This is a great start. This is a great, in taking this course, you will begin to find the truth of who you are. And I would love mm. that for you. And mm. um, yeah, so I appreciate you all being here and taking a look at this. And I had a really good time, Michael. Thank you so much for coming on. And I'm so excited to see where this goes and get it out there and, you know, re, re put it back out into the world. And um, for those of you who don't know, we do actually do this course in Boca Raton, Florida as well. So, um, yeah. In January. 
The next one's in January. Yes. And you can find all that information on the website too. On the website. Yep. Yes. So yeah, definitely. I mean, if you have questions, reach out uh, and find out more. That's all I got. All right. Thank you for being here on the Ride of My Life podcast. I'm Caroline Rena. Thank you, Michael. And have a wonderful day or a night wherever you are. Bye-bye now. Take care. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. More to come.